So I'll start by talking a little bit about uh, cognitive IoT, which uh, Jeffrey uh, talked extensively about earlier today. Uh, so since he kind of motivated the main idea, which is just for practical concerns, learning and reasoning must move to the edge, uh, maybe I'll take a different, uh, make it a little different point that says really everyone needs to start thinking about cognitive IoT, even if you're not an IBM or like our company, making technology, uh, making cognitive technology at the edge. And the one example I'll make is uh, very mundane, which is dishwashers. So dishwashers soon will be active devices that are monitoring sound, monitoring temperature, feeding this data back uh, up to servers, uh, basically diagnosing themselves and uh, comparing their data to other dishwashers around uh, you know, in real time. So anyone who makes a product that they're shipping out of the world, consumers are soon going to expect that your product is constantly monitored, constantly fixing itself, constantly updating itself, uh, no matter how mundane. Uh, and, and likewise, all of your suppliers feeding into you, you're expecting, going to expect to know exactly where every piece of that product is at every time, what its condition is, and so forth. So there's a lot of challenges for uh, CTOs, no matter what, your, uh, what kind of company you work with, to, to stay ahead of this, this kind of uh, transformational change. You've been hearing about quantum computing a lot today, so I will not um, you know, spend a lot of time on the um, dis disruptive aspect of the technology. This is, but I, I want to make a point that it's not really common that you hear a lot. Of, uh, it's a new thing that you hear uh, about quantum computing so often right now. And it's, it wasn't the case one year ago. It wasn't the case two years ago. But quantum computing has, as a concept has been, has been around since 30 years. I mean, it started really as a, as a, as a theoretical idea in 1981. And, and why, the reason we are, we are all hearing about this today with such frequency is that some things have changed tremendously in the last couple of years. And this is something unexpected to most of the professionals that entered this field five, six, ten years ago. Me as a student, I was told by my eminent professors that we were 50 years I had like behind uh, a quantum computer, so it was like more um, mathematical curiosity, more or less. But my point is, what happened is that in the last two years or so, we've been uh, uh, lectured by uh, some companies that has decided to actually go on, uh, maybe secretly for, <laughs> not secretly, but definitely without uh, asking advice. Um, to create uh, quantum devices at an unprecedented level of engineering. And we have seen uh, some breakthrough just in the last year, which were quite mind-boggling. I mean, there were statements of people saying that their uh, lifetime dreams was to have a single qubit fully error-corrected, but now we are getting there. And this is something which uh, has taken us uh, uh, a lot by surprise. So I welcome tremendously, uh, like I'm very happy to see that uh, companies and startups are actually taking the challenge to innovate in the space, even if we are a lot, uh, um, you know, early stage. And um, so the impact on the digital life of all of us of quantum computing, I don't think will be uh, tremendous in the next three to five years. Uh, um, Professor Matthias Troyer has mentioned the uh, possibility of quantum games. I actually welcome qu reality, virtual reality expert to find applications on this. And I believe that at NASA, uh, we have uh, seen the potential. And, uh, and, uh, and together with uh, other corporations uh, of the magnitude of uh, Google, uh, IBM, and Intel, I mean, there, there has been now billions of dollars invested on the creation of an actually working quantum device. This is unprecedented. And this is something which uh, calls for challenges for uh, experts, uh, uh, such as yourself, to find a good uh, uh, near-term uh, applications of quantum computing, which, uh, of course, promises to uh, optimize and uh, disrupt problems which are hard, but not necessarily hard because they're large. 
you know, a lot of problems of today are, are hard because you have a lot of variables and you have to, you know, crunch them all, big data. Now, we are more interested in finding problems which are hard from a combinatorial point of view, which are really hard intrinsically. And those are the problems we're trying to solve with the, with the quantum computer today. So sure, I'm the founder and CEO of MetaMind, and we're a, an AI company that specializes in deep learning. So you might ask yourself, okay, what is deep learning? When is it actually useful for me to know about it? And it's largely if you deal with a lot of unstructured data and you want to extract structured data out of it. So instead of sort of theoretically uh, describing <coughs> this to you, I'll just show you a bunch of demos that uh, our small company has built, and some of them are productized now also in just a couple of months. And that, I think, will give you some sense of how powerful this technology is if you have uh, the right kind of unstructured data. Mm -hmm.